what you send, it's that you do. I don't believe. All my emails are personalized. My houses come up in the first You're recording that testimony. Really, the more you have to be organized. Not to put all your eggs into one basket. Keep those people remembering you. Give them what they're looking for. But properly priced is the key. And I say, how can I do this different? You know, we don't have a technology problem, we have a people problem. You have to build a relationship. Secret of top-selling agents with your host. Deborah Helleran and Mel McMurrin. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I am so excited to have our special guest today, Chris Berg, a very successful broker from San Diego, California. And you may recognize her as a national columnist with In the News and on HGTV. And Chris is the author of a book, yes, you heard that right, book, an electronic book that includes video, and it's called Get Real, in brackets, Estate, A Guide to Life, Happiness, and the Pursuit of Property. And you may also know her from her famous YouTube video, How to Buy a Bank-Owned Home, which went viral with over 160,000 views. Yeah, you've got to check that out. It's very funny. Secrets of Top Selling Agents welcomes Chris Burke. Thank you very much, Chris, for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, I've always enjoyed your columns in, in the news. I love your writing. Thank you. Well, let's get started. Mel, bring up the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, we're going to start out. I'm going to start out first. The first half of this or so is, is more or less a trip through my brain. I'm going to kind of set the stage for the way I tend to think about our business and our advertising, our marketing, our branding, um, and, and deploying the tools we use for, for some purpose. Um, and I, this is a, actually something I drew myself, as if you couldn't tell. Um, it's a slide I used at an art presentation a year or so ago, talking about balance in our business, and, and it's such a such a difficult thing to achieve. You know, most people think about the bell curve in terms, or the normal curve, as we call it, in terms of grading in the classroom. You know, you had them when all of your tests were graded on a curve. At one end, you have the slackers who can't find their way to class without a note pinned to their collar, and then in my case, on the other end, you had stupid Sherman Gregory who could could uh, prove the theory of relativity in his sleep, and he ruined it for everyone. And, and in the middle, there's all of the rest of us. And and that's not to say that you shouldn't strive for the extreme, but um, I like to rem remind people that you can also make yourself crazy. There's a big happy place in the middle where most of us reside. And so, and so I'm, I'm going to use the bell curve in a little different way to talk about technology. Um, because at the one end of the spectrum you have all tech, all, all geek, all day, and at the other, the other end you have people who are only using the new world to, or the old world tools. In the middle, I think when you're talking about um, uh, branding yourself and doing your business, you, you really need to think about being in that middle because you need to use the old and the new. The one thing you don't want to do is be the head of the dinosaur. Um, the dumb old internet, you know, it changed the way we do business and it, it forced us in a huge way to adopt, adapt, and learn. But there are some old, to, old tools that really still have a place in our business and, and finding that balance will help you find balance in your business. Um, the customers changed, obviously, and, and uh, here's, here's another Chris creation, um, they don't care about this stuff anymore. It's not about us. They don't care about your awards and all those letters after your name are meaningless. Um, posing with your pet iguana or holding the fake phone to your ear. Even that silly picture, it just doesn't matter to them anymore. Um, what they want to know is what you stand for. Everyone's a top producer today. Everyone's a neighborhood specialist. So the idea is to distinguish yourself. You've got to stand for something. Moving on. Um, so, so we need to change our message. It's no longer about just telling them, um, I'm number one in the Delta Quadrant. Um, look at all these trophies I won. It, it's about showing them. Um, because it, our customers today want to be involved in a communication. Uh, and they want to be engaged. Um, and if we can go back. Sorry about that. Um, I, I like this slide because it reminds us it's not about the words, it's about what we stand for. So what does this tell you? Well, it says couldn't sell the house the first time. Um, it says we're low on ink toner, maybe. Um, it says all we care about is hog tying you and getting you to sign the darn contract. 
we want your business. Well, of course we want your business. But what this ad instead should be saying is why you might hire me instead of your hairstylist or your friend from high school or the 40,000 other people out there who are producing similar flyers. So going on, it, it, it's about changing our message and differentiating. Um, it's not about you anymore. It's, it's about social search. Um, you went, and when we get to the robot video, you know, that's kind of a great example of how you want people to start talking about you. Um, you a little less talking about ourselves. So there's no one size fits all. Here are a few of my truisms, and, and of course these are mine. Yours are going to vary because we're different people. We have a different market. We have different demographics. We have different skill sets. Um, first of all, no one size fits all. What works for me isn't going to work for you. And we can change slides there. Um, we have a different, a million different markets. I, and uh, you, you're going to hear people say, I make a bazillion dollars a day from Facebook, my Facebook page. Well, they may. And I hate Facebook. I have a personal page and I have a business page. And I have them because someone told me I had to. But I don't enjoy it. I'm not really good at it. It's, so it's the place I never go. So, so you need to find what works for you. You have a million options out there, uh, which brings us to you can't do it all. And, and don't let anyone tell you you can. You just can't, period. Um, there are nearly unlimited challenges or channels out there, um, both online and off, for us to promote our services and show our stuff. You've got to pick the ones that work for you and focus on those. Um, sure, your marketing and business plans need to be a well-balanced breakfast, but if I spend eight hours a day tweeting my fingers bloody, something else has got to give. And uh, before we leave that last slide, I, there was, I, I want to share a story very briefly. Um, a couple of years ago, I was talking to a friend. Um, we were waxing philosophical, philosophical about this whole idea of establishing a brand. And he had spent years working for Johnson & Johnson. And at that point, he reminded me about, about why they're important and, and why they were successful. When you think of Johnson & Johnson, you think of baby shampoo. There are a million people out there who are, who are manufacturing baby shampoo, but they got to the place where you only think of J&J. &J. Um, conversely, they have many, many products. But when I hear Johnson & Johnson, I immediately think of the baby shampoo. And so translate that into some of the things we do in marketing ourselves. Um, his analogy was bus benches. You can put your picture on one bus bench or three bus benches. And, and that's not going to build a brand. That's not going to be a successful um, campaign because you haven't owned the channel. Um, put your picture on every bus bench in town. Now you've got all the bus riders looking at your mug and you're making an impression. So you've got to pick the channels. You can't own them all. And then there's the 12-month rule, of course. And this is my rule. Your rule may be um, six months. It may be you know, two months. But 12 has, has been a good thing for me um, to, to hold true to. Don't be quick to abandon what doesn't work, but not too quick. Um, you can't sit one open house and expect a, a career to blossom out of that. Um, you have to sit many, many, many until the same people are seeing your signs and seeing you over and over again. Only then does it start to make an impression. You can't do one postcard mailing if you're into print marketing because they will they will not remember you. You have to do it over and over again. Um, one blog post is not going to make you go viral. You have to do it consistently. So it's a process, not an event. And then you've got to, I believe, you, the most successful business plans are the ones that mix old and new. You've got to add some old, add some new, and stir ferociously and figure out what works. It's what we call, around my house, cross-contamination. <laughs> use one to promote the other. Use the other to promote the one. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, about how I, how I promote my online activities using my off and vice versa. Um, so it's really about connecting. I mean, that's, and you know we're getting a whole earful these days. Um, the new pink for spring seems to be to um, tell all of the agents that they have to be teched out, geeked out. Um, social media is, is the panacea for the business. It, it's not about online, offline. It's not about digital. It's not about the Bunko group. It's all about connecting. And however you do that that's effective for you, that's going to be an effective business plan. 
and that was a very brief run through. In the next section, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we have done, the tools we've used, and how that all fits in, into my whole philosophy of, of, of mixing old and new and not making yourself crazy. And by the way, I do want to say, um, I'll preface it by saying I, I'm a maniac most of the time, so I'm not suggesting that you're going to have absolute bliss in bal balancing family and, and work and, and um, those sorts of things, but it, it will it will give you some semblance of sanity, I believe, to go forward and be successful. Well, thanks, Chris. Yeah, the, the main thing is to find something that you're good at and you love and not try and do all of it, it seems to me. Well, exactly, and, and to tune out the noise. You know, I see a lot of people getting caught up in the, you must do this. I, I actually, a very, um, very prominent, everyone would know the name if I said it, so I won't. Um, real estate coach and speaker in a panel I was moderating at Inman a, a couple of years ago, stood up in front of this room and somebody asked him, do I need to have a blog? And his response was, only if you want to be in business tomorrow. And uh, respect him a lot, but that's a, the biggest bunch of horse hooey I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do any of these things. What you have to do is what works for you, what you enjoy, what you're good at, and you have to stick to it and be consistent with your approach. Um, it's all about working hard and having a plan, whatever that plan is. Right. Okay, great. We've got some great information coming up from Chris, but now Mel is going to do a two-minute Sponsor break. Less than two minutes. Excellent. You can sign up for your free MyHomes.com profile and list for your five coverage areas and start talking to future clients in the new Homes.com questions and answers community. It takes less than a minute to sign up, and it's absolutely free. Number one expert credential websites generate over 46 leads a month on average for top selling agents only. So contact them to qualify for guaranteed leads, enhanced graphic packages, and the new Diamond number one expert. Advanced Access serves more agents than anyone. Tons of templates, listing syndication, lead capturing, and their search impact internet marketing services. Why? Advanced Access. Paul Dixon, that's not Paul, by the way, on your screen. He'll be joining us from eNeighborhoods at the end of the hour, and he's going to explain the marketing tools you need to make the most of every meeting. Find out why they say, walk in with eNeighborhoods and walk out with a new client. And Premier Website Advantage from Agent Advantage showcases your listings as preferred to the 6 million plus home buyers visiting homes.com each month, who then land on your full featured website with powerful Agent Advantage tools. And now we get to the meat. Take it over, Chris. <laughs> Thanks. And I really blew, blew through that first part because I didn't want this to, to morph into another social media bashing session um, because that's certainly not it, not what it's about. But I will tell you, in the beginning, I made this bloggy thing. Um, and that's how I really got involved in, in the social media and technology side of the business and, and, and kind of stumbled into being an early adopter. Um, back then, and this was five years ago, I started my little blog. They called them weblogs. <laughs> and uh, and I've, I've kept that, that subtitle on the blog because I find it somewhat charming and, and it grounds me. But I came home and I told my husband, we need, we need a weblog. And he said, what is that? And I said, I don't know. And he said, and then I said, but we're going to have one. He said, well, how's that going to make us money? And I said, oh, I don't know. And then he said, no. And so I immediately went in the office and shut the door in what I called the profanity zone, and I made a blog. Um, at the beginning, we, you know, I just didn't know what I was doing. I had no plan. I just wrote. I wrote, and it was group therapy. And then I got my husband to write some posts, and I would write one, and he would comment, and he would write, and I would comment. And we were speaking to no one. We, we kind of lucked out on this. Um, but what I found through the blogging was, and I gave it the 12 months. It was 12 months before I had any indication that I was speaking to anyone but my husband. Um, it, within 12, 12 months' time, we started hearing from people. And they're not people you see. And that goes back to connecting. Remember, it's about a conversation, but it's not always a conversation that, that is front front facing. You may not even know that conversation, if you will, is going on. Um, but we started getting calls from people, warm calls. Um, I like to tell the story about how I, we showed up at a listing appointment one day, and we were told we were competing. And we got to the door, 
And this woman looked at us, and we, you know, we were like Desert Storm. We had all our stuff, and the first thing she said is, you aren't wearing your yellow shoes. And my husband and I exchanged the looks like, uh-oh, head case, crazy lady. And once we got inside, inside, all she wanted to do was sign the contract, and then she mentioned, I read your blog. And then I remembered that I had written a blog post a few months back about I was buying a snappy pair of yellow shoes, and I was going to feel so perky. And it had nothing to do with real estate, but everything to do with me. So that cold call turned into a warm call. We had been having a de facto conversation, if you will, and I just didn't know it. So all things social media, I think you have to remember that more often than not, the, the person who you're engaging, you may not even be aware of it. Um, so, so we did this little bloggy thing. The beauty of it was that um, that it it did put it, it took us out of that pushing that message and showing them um, the picture of our dog and our picture and the trophy pictures, and it brought us into this kind of connection with our clients, which is what you want because we are in a people business, and no question about it. Um, and then, you know, the website. So these were standalone things for a long, long time. Um, most recently, we um, took our website, which used to be static, um, to a WordPress platform. So Google likes it a lot more. And that's what the, the geeky boys and the web designers will, will push the web WordPress platform um, because because of the search engine op optimization component. Honestly, I'm... I'm a whole lot less concerned about some 12-year-old in Toledo finding my website off a of Google search than I am about people in my hood and on my block, in my community, um, finding a resource and a way to communicate and connect with me. And so I, I tend to look at things a little bit backwards. But um, now these two are married in the same platform. And the idea here is to give to communicate on whatever level your client needs to communicate with you on. Um, we are tweeners right now. You, there are still, as much, as much as all this hoopla is going on about technology and social media, we still have clients who don't own a computer. Um, we still have clients who wouldn't know how to send a text message if their life depended on it and are using you know, six-year-old cell phone technology. So if you look at the front of this website, you'll see, of course, you've got to give them the information they want, the search for homes. That's pretty, pretty typical. It has to be a somewhat pleasing presentation. That's not going to send them running for the hills. But you also want to be there on their terms. So we have a chat box on there. If, if somebody wants to chat under the cloak of anonymity, they can do it. Um, actually closed an escrow last month off somebody who hit me off that chat box. Um, and I've closed many that way. We have all of our social media icons and handles. If you were to click the contact button, it has our phone number, our fax number. Yes, some people still have fax machines. Um, our email. So the idea is whatever Whatever floats their boat, we need to be able to speak that language and be confer conversant uh, across these um, uh, across these platforms. Chris, I have a question um, for you. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Customers want transparency. We we were doing this long before before Zillow and some other sites uh, decided to put agent agent. Um, um, reviews online um, because it's part of the conversation again it's instead of pushing a paper testimonial into their lap at a listing appointment now we walk in and say go here go here and see what our clients are saying when we close the transaction we have them actually go on our website um, we encourage them to go on our website and type what they thought about us um, it's and that way I think people give it more credence, um, that openness, that, that ability to share. And, and we all aren't perfect. We, we had talked about this step um, earlier. Well, if you, you had a question, have you ever had anyone you know, give you a bad comment? We haven't. But my husband and I, and I hope we can stay true to this, made the decision when we did this for us and our agents that regardless of what people wrote, we were going to let it stand because nobody is perfect. And, and uh, you know, if, if somebody were to go on there someday and say, Chris sucks, you know, I, I think that has value too because it, it shows a real um, aspect to, to us and it, it, it makes this 
personal relationship you're trying to develop with your with your customer base, just a little more personal. So um, this is one of the things we've done. We've uh, clicking the next one. No. There. We have uh, frequently asked questions on our blog sidebar, and and I have fun with this. This goes back to being being true to who you are, making that cold call a warm call. Um, it, it does a couple of things. First of all, it helps us to drive that those feet on the ground people, um, that traffic to our online persona. Um, so if I get an email and someone says, well, you know, what's this about the transfer disclosure statement or who pays what in a transaction, I can send them a link to our blog and say, go, I did, I did a post on that once. And if you've been blogging for any amount of time, you've answered all the questions 48 times. So it gets them online. Um, secondarily, it's, it's another way of injecting our personalities. Um, I said I have fun with it. If you look at the bottom of the slide, there's actually under inspections, one of my frequent asked questions is, did your daughter win on the Price is Right? And uh, hey, it's my blog. I'm going to do what I want. So yeah, I had a post on my daughter winning the showcase and the Price is Right. And, and uh, so now my would-be clients know that I have a wave, wave, sorry, wave runner in my garage. So we have a little fun with it. We try to inject personality. Not everyone's going to like us. Big news flash there. But those are the people that probably wouldn't have been working with us anyway, so it's a cleansing process as well. But the idea here, and you'll see this, this is a common theme throughout, is that everything we do, um, we do to cross market. I, I mentioned earlier that we're a little backwards in our thinking. I think most people who are really embracing all of the techn technology tools out there are thinking in terms of driving search traffic to their site. Actually, we're using print marketing, which we'll get to, to drive the traffic to our site, not for the site to drive business to us. Um, because ultimately, the end game is not, again, the 18-year-old in Toledo who's, who's messing around at 2 in the morning and finds your site. Um, the end game is to, to be talking to that person who has a house around the corner to sell or a buyer who's trolling the neighborhood to buy one. Um, so people still like paper. And this here I'm going to talk a little bit about brand, too, because this may or may not work in your market. It also may or may not, not jive with what you're trying to accomplish in your branding campaign. Again, remember, brand is not about your logo, it's not, not about your picture, it's about what you stand for. In our case, over the years, we have evolved to standing for excellence in marketing, excellence in customer service. And it's not enough for me to say that in the print form. I have to demonstrate it. So these, um, this is actually the front of a bifold brochure. They are insanely expensive. We put them in front. Uh, we put them inside the house, the same hard, glossy cardstock. And uh, people still dig them. Um, but on the next slide, you'll see that we also, this is the back side of one of our brochures, we also mail these. So you see, you see the little bulk mailbox, again, enormously expensive. And I say meet the Flintstones here because, you know, 90% of the people listening out there are probably saying uh, um, print marketing is dead. I actually read a tweet from someone who I respect a whole bunch yesterday that said, um, uh, that said, uh, direct mail is dead. And I am here to tell you that in our market it most certainly is not. So what you're accomplishing, what we're accomplishing by doing this level of quality piece and what we're accomplishing it by mailing it to the neighborhood is, is twofold. First of all, it is serving the purpose. It's doing what they hired us to do to promote and sell their home. And I will tell you that these things work. Um, again, in our market we've gotten feedback from buyer's agents that this brochure was the reason they eventually bought our house versus another listing because, you know, after they'd gone through eight hours in the car and they've got this 40-pound 40, uh, 40 stack of, of flyers and things in their lap, this one was prettier and it kept gravitating to the top. So that's one thing. But secondarily, it's showing your future clients what you can do and it's demonstrating what you stand for. 
Um, the last two of these we mailed, and we do it every time. That goes back to the consistency part. I can't just mail it for one listing and say, oh, I mailed it, phone's going to ring. No, that's not going to happen. You have to do it with every single listing. Um, the last two we mailed these on, each one resulted in a listing for us. Um, one was a case where the seller received it, and he was currently listed with another agent who, um, you know, had taken the photos herself, and she was in the bathroom mirror on the MLS photos, and, and uh, there was a third generation Xerox in his flyer box, and, and uh, he wanted us. So, so it really does work. Um, you'll, you'll also see on these, um, before we flip over, you'll see an evidence of our cross-contamination again, um, and trying to speak to as many people as we can. Of course, we've got the phone number, we've got the email number, I'll show you some other materials we do where we have more than that yet, but you will see that we're promoting both our, our website, San Diego Castles, and our blog, San Diego Home Blog. So people with feet on the ground are getting that link. Um, this is a print piece we do, it's a community newsletter. Um, we run two full page ads in this thing every month. One is for all of our homes because in fact they did hire us to sell their homes. Um, the other We've been taking a minimalist marketing approach and it really dovetails nicely with our brand and the point is that this approach isn't necessarily going to work for you but everything you do has to be consistent with what you're trying to accomplish. So in our case, it's about the houses. In our case, it's about the service. And um, we don't need to say top 1% in the universe. Um, we've, we've earned this right, by the way, to go with a more minimalist approach. You'll see on the left-hand side, that was a piece that ran on the back page. And because it was the back page of this, we did a little pretend flippy up. And you only see half of our company name. Um, you don't see our pictures on it at all. Um, just the website, so very minimalist. All of these things, if you're, if you're doing print marketing, um, you've got to remember that You've got one nanosecond from the time it hits their little hands until it goes to the recycle bin, and, and you've got that time to make an impression. So it's all about imagery. It's not about words. I, I could have a wall of words on this thing, and it would be completely lost. And think of it in terms of consistency, like you know the theme song from Gilligan's Island. The first time you heard it, you didn't remember the words. You hear it over and over and over again, and eventually you can't get the stupid thing out of your head. And then, like a bad jingle, and that's what we're going for in all of our marketing pieces. Chris, a ch quick question here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, back at your brochure, do you hire a professional photographer? Do we hire? Uh, oh, we always use professional photographers. Always, always, always. Um, we could do okay photos ourselves. Um, it would take more time. It would be cheaper. Um, but that's not what we do. We help people buy and sell real estate, and there are people who do nothing but take beautiful professional photos. Right. So we trust the professionals to do that, and that's one of my pet peeves. I mean, I've got many, but I alluded to the agent in the mirror, and I've written blog posts on this. Good grief. You know, it, how... how, how <laughs> How difficult is it to, to understand that mirrors reflect? And I, I will tell you that probably one out of six MLS photo spreads I see have some agent in some mirror holding a camera. So no, it's, it's all part of our higher quality campaign. And do you do this for all the homes you sell or just your high-end homes? Every single home, and that's another distinction that we've made for ourselves and that people have come to rely on. Um, we do these brochures for $80,000 condos, studio apartments. We, we do them for $2 million homes. Our theory is, our philosophy is, that if it's a good marketing strategy for one, why isn't it good for the other? The only reason we would have a class system in marketing and say, well, you're cheaper, you're only going to get one page flyer and you're more expensive, is because we're concerned about ourselves over the client. So again, everybody gets the same level of service. Right. Comes back to branding. You want to be known as... Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, it, well, and I've got a story on the branding, too. Um, it took a long time for us to, to, we have always insisted that all of the agents in our office 
do this. We have a formula. You know, we tell them they must use professional photos. They must be able to write and complete sentences. They, they must use spell check. They must do this quality of brochure. We'll get to custom science. There are all these things we tell them they must do. And at first, there was a lot of resistance because sometimes when you have a lower price property, oh, that's eaten into your profit, and you're not quite getting getting how it pencils. You're thinking the return on investment doesn't pencil out. Right. So we had um, one of our agents this week listed a, a smaller condo. And he did this, and he was reluctant, and it sold the first week, and he was at church um, the following week, and his pastor came running up, waving the brochure, because his client was so thrilled, so thrilled, they took a pile of brochures and passed them out to the whole congregation. Uh -huh. um, so that's, that's the kind of marketing you can't put a price on, because that's ultimately what we're after, is, is, is that going viral. We want people talking about us so we don't have to talk about us. Speaking of price, uh, Ray's asking, so then you set up a budget that's the same for each client or, or do they have some differences? You know what? Call me crazy. Um, they don't. They don't. We do the exact same thing for every property. And what do but you spend on them? You know, uh, for us, and, and we have, we do have the benefit, I mean, if you're, if you're coming from Green Bay, Wisconsin, or, or Gila Bend, New Mexico, you probably have a very different market than I have. But um, uh, we will spend, we're in a higher end market. Um, and by the way, just full transparency, back in 2003, in the good old days, our average sale price was running around 850. Um, 850,000. Today, our average sale price is hovering around 600,000, and that's that's a gift from our lovely market. Um, but given that, we spend on average about two to three thousand dollars per listing um, marketing wow. them. Obviously, and that's a minimum. I mean, on every single one, and unless it sells before the custom sign goes up, um, we we spend a minimum of two thousand dollars. Obviously, you're going to have some that are going to be lingering, or they're going to be on higher traffic thoroughfares, and you're going to go through a thousand brochures instead of a hundred. So, so that that number will vary. But um, it it does work for us. And again, I would rather invest um, a dollar in myself to make ten dollars and have those people handing it to the entire congregation and saying call Chris um, then cheap it out and and I think that's the difference between a career and a job it's the difference between looking at this long term and looking um, at it as when's my next paycheck so I can pay the pizza guy sometimes it's painful. I mean, it, it, no doubt. You know, we we like everyone else took a haircut in this market the past few few years, um, in terms of units and in terms of average sale price. So there were were admittedly months and quarters and half years where we were robbing Peter to pay Paul to keep doing what it is we do. But we did it knowing that this was our career and that when this market passed and they all do. We wanted to be the ones still standing, um, so we do it how consistently. Much, how much of that three thousand dollars that you use on marketing for each house is used for glossy brochures? Glossy brochures. Um, well, you've inherent in a glossy brochure is professional photography. So depending on your photographer, that can be one hundred and fifty dollars for a shoot, or it can be three hundred. Um, Inherent in that is a little design time. Um, these brochures themselves uh, run about, <laughs> gasp, everyone take a breath, about two bucks a piece. And uh, on the average listing, we probably, these days, um, we've been fortunate. We go through about 100, not counting the mailers. But I had one listing on a busy, busy street where we went through 800 recently. So that can add up. Um, then if you mail them, you know, you've got the same price for the piece and you've got your bulk mail on top of that. But I told you the last two listings we did, mailed them and got a listing out of them. The last one, uh, this house actually, um, this house was an uh, $825,000 sale. Huh. So it was, you know, I'll let you do the math. It right. was worth a brochure mailer. Chris. 
Thomas is gasping, he's, and he's wondering what's the ratio between those $80,000 condos and the $600,000 plus if you're doing all that marketing for those condos. Well, um, what's the oh, ratio? I don't know. I think the important thing is average sale price. Our average sale price is running around $600,000 this year. Okay. That probably answers yeah. this question. So it doesn't, doesn't matter, you know, at that point, I guess, how many units are on either side. I would, I would say we do, we do far more single-family detached homes than we do condominiums. Right. And, Fran and then, yeah, to so know. we do bleed money, and that's kind of kind of our mo. And it's starting to pay off in dividends, and it's taken years. Uh -huh. Staging. Um, these aren't my pictures, by the way, for anyone who's still out there. But it, it does give you a sense of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, we provide staging for all of our homes, all of them. So um, we've got a wonderful stager. She doesn't bring in furniture. If it's a vacant home, she does what we call vignette staging um, to take the rough edges off, maybe sets, sets the breakfast bar and a plant here and, and a mirror there. Um, if it's a lived-in home, it's a full day of um, of really hard, hard work where she comes in and pushes their stuff around and brings smalls in to kind of tell the color story. Um, it's absolutely essential in this market. No longer are we in a market where homes just sell themselves and, and the agents out there will undoubtedly agree with me that it really is a tale of two cities. Um, you have the Buyers who are out there looking for a smoking, smoking deal, and it doesn't matter how fallen down ugly it is, uglier the better, they can go brag to grandma about what a great price they got. And then you have the buyers who want everything. They want a fair price. They want all of those upgrades they couldn't afford in 2003, 4, 5. Um, and they want it perfect. It's mediocrity that's really being hammered in our market today. So, so we do offer the staging services. Yes, we do pay for it. I know, I know agents that do and pass it through to their customers. But again, um, we're trying to make a distinction. And we want, uh, we benefit because we want our homes to sell more quickly and we want them to sell for more money and we want the pictures on the brochure to look prettier because that's our business tomorrow. Um, Chris, have you on. proved that staging actually speeds up the process? Well, I, I, can't, I can't give you a spreadsheet proving it, but intuitively I will tell you absolutely no doubt in my mind. I'll also tell you how important it is to branding and maintaining that brand promise. Right now we have a, a home that's a um, sad little home in terms of, of condition, and for, for reasons I won't go into, it was just not, we did not have the opportunity, the, the ability to stage it. The consistent comments we've been getting from the agents and the buyers going through this home is how surprised they are because it doesn't look like a bird listing. It's not what they expected from one of our listings. Um, and that goes back to a little bit about branding that I don't think I've mentioned is it takes you years to establish this reputation and get to the point where people are talking about you and your phone's ringing. It, you can unravel that brand with one broken promise. So you have to be consistent and you can't filch. Hmm. <laughs> the robot video. This was another, much like my blogging experiment was, was just no purpose, um, had, had no idea what I was doing, just thought I should or felt like it. Um, this was another one of those accidents. Um, in reality, it's not an accident that made me any money, but I, there is such a, an important message here. And if I could bottle it and if I could find a way to translate this to, to real money-making opportunities, I would. I was on, um, I, I call it watching Twitter. I, I don't tweet 400 times a day, maybe once if I'm lucky and feeling like it. But I do watch Twitter and I follow a lot of people and I watch what they're saying. It's like my de facto feed reader. So one morning, um, I see someone tweet about this site, extranormal.com. If you want to go there, it's really fun. And it's free and you can make, you can just type in words into your screen and it makes this it animates these characters for you and makes you a little video. So I was having a really particularly bad time with um, 
with uh, foreclosures, bank-owned homes, and and uh, getting buyers um, in there and successfully getting offers submitted. I, in short, I was just really pissed off at the banks. So in my jammies, over a cup of coffee at 5 a.m., I went to this little site, and I just typed in my words and had my moment of group therapy. It took me about 30 minutes. And I did it for no other reason than, than getting an embed code so I could throw it on my blog. And this is how stupid I am. Um, because it, in order to get the embed code, I had to first set up a YouTube account. Yes, I didn't even have a YouTube account. So I set up this account, and my username is San Diego Castles. I have no profile, nothing. You would not know who owned the site. And I posted this little video. But by the end of the first day, I had like... I don't know, 500 views. By the end of a couple weeks, I was up to almost 100,000, and it ended up topping out at around 162, I think, thousand um, page views. It was so crazy um, that I had people many times a day sending me the link to this video that I had done saying, this is the funniest thing you've ever seen. You've got to go look at it. So. Um, the, I, I think the message I want to make here is this is what you're trying to accomplish with everything you do in your business, um, is you're trying to get those people talking about you. You know, when I, when I do an excellent job marketing a property or when my, my agent has, has his client handing brochures out at church and to the pastor, that's kind of like this going viral and people emailing people the link to this video. You want them out there doing your work for you. And this is very funny video. Everyone should see that. <laughs> yeah. By the way, well, I'll, send used... the, I'll send the link to everyone, but we'll do that at the end of the webinar because they'll get way too distracted. <laughs> I amused myself, and that's that's most of my a good part of my business plan is simply that. Which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you have a blog, blog for yourself um, right. because. If you aren't enjoying it, first of all, people will sense it. Second of all, you won't you won't stick with it, and uh, and and thirdly, they won't stick with you. Um, you know, when I started blogging, I'm sorry, I'm off subject here, but we'll just look at the robots for a minute. When I started blogging in 2005, um, there weren't a lot of blogs out there, so it was pretty easy to rise to the top and get found and, and get a following. Today, everyone has a blog of some sort. Um, so <laughs> you want people who come there to actually not only get the information they're looking for, but have it presented in a way that doesn't want to make them shoot their shoot their eyeballs out with their two-hole punch. You want them to hang around. Um, and you want them to enjoy reading it, and that's going to keep them coming back. So it doesn't mean it, have to, it has to be a laugh riot. It doesn't mean you have to talk about your kids and your dog, although everyone who reads mine knows everything about my life because of that. Um, it just means you have, you have to be real. Um, and You're you have extremely to honest, Chris. Like, frighteningly honest. I love it. And that's what's so attractive. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a customer, too. I'm a consumer, too. And so I try to wear that hat as often as I can and think, if I, if I were not wearing the agent or the broker hat at this moment, how would, how would I react to this piece I'm putting out? How would I respond to this blog post? And so on. Right. It's not it rocket science. It really isn't. You know, this real estate stuff isn't hard. Mm. But you've just got to remember, you've got to work hard, and you've got to have a plan. You've got to think through it. Put on the old thinking cap. Um, sticks in the yard. This was one of the best things we ever did, if I do say so myself. And uh, by the way, it was not an original idea. Nothing I've ever done in my life was an original idea. It's all been done. So get over that. Um, go out there and find the best. Find the most intriguing. Adapt it. Make it new by adapting it for your own purposes. Cherry pick. Um, so I, I stole this idea of a custom sign. I think someone in Phoenix started it um, a couple of years ago, and I thought it, thought it might have potential. Um, and it's, it's been great. Every one of our listings, we do um, a unique sign for that property. You're all asking, how much, how much? Um, the same sign company that installs our, our standard signs also makes these for us, not counting the sign post installation. Um, the sign itself is running $87.50 a piece. So how's that for transparency? A mm -hmm. um, the, the couple of cool things about this. First of all, it's true to our brand again. We're advertising the house. We're not over advertising overly advertising ourselves. Secondly, we're hiring us to do what you asked us to do. 
These things are showstoppers. You know, you can stand in front of a house and go, whoa, pretty house. But so many, it just doesn't tell the story. So this gives us the, uh, the ability to bring them inside and into the back so they can see beyond the front stoop. Um, we have text on the sign that's unique to the property so we can highlight the most important features. And then it also goes back to that whole being as many things to as many people as you can. So you see on the signpost, we have our glossy brochures. We have our website address. We have our phone number for, for our uh, friends in Bedrock. And we even have the stupid old QR code on this. Now, um, is that important? Do they work? There's been a whole lot of, we've been doing the QR codes, by the way, for I think at least a year and a half, long before they were fashionable. Um, I, I think they're pretty silly, actually. I don't think anyone really uses them. Um, but there, there may be one guy out there with a smartphone who digs these things. And if there's just one guy, it's going to appeal to him. And we've just, we've just spoken to him in his language. Um, much like sitting in open house is probably your lowest, um, uh, lowest percentage play. Um, somebody, every couple of years, is probably going to wander into an open house and buy the darn house who wouldn't have. So we try to throw as much against the wall as we possibly can here um, and, and hope that you know, we're speaking to everybody. Um, oh, the other thing about these signs um, is that the imagery is huge. So people can see these and we get a lot of feedback. Wow, we saw that you have another listing way down. We didn't go past it, but we can see it a quarter mile away. So the branding is there like that bad jingle. It sticks in their head. Um, and these are the best, biggest business card you can ever buy. Because what we do at the end of the process is we take this guy off its little hooks before we order the signpost down. And uh, we watch the buyer and seller walk through fight over it. It's really hysterical. Um, we've had sellers put these on the moving truck and, ta and take them to Nebraska. Um, we've had buyers, uh, mostly buyers, end up with some great garage art. But the beauty is, um, for the entire time they live there, and it's probably not going to be forever, they have a constant reminder of who the listing agent was, the quality of, of, of the marketing that we do. And when it comes time to sell, they may and they do call us. So it's it's a pretty fun pretty fun thing. Um, so oh, on the QR code. Checking on a couple funny. of things. Uh, the cost of the sign was eighty seven fifty. <laughs> yeah, for us again, your mileage yep. may vary. You know, depending on your And who's the sign company? Um, it's probably a very familiar sign company with most people. Um, D Signs is our local sign company. They are the same sign company. They have a bit of a local monopoly. Um, they're the ones that put all the sticks in. They do all the installs and takedowns in our in our in our markets. So now it, it, remember, you still have to. In this case, we still have our standard signs because we necessarily have about a five-day lag in the time we order these until they come out of production. And, and typically, once the pictures arrive, that house is going into the MLS. So what we do is we have our standard ugly sign installed with our ugly mugs on it. And then our sign company knows now to just swap them out when this comes out of production. Okay. Um, oh, and I was just going to share the one, one story about the QR code that cracked me up um, as evidence that, that most people still don't know what the heck this is. Um, we had a client recently when his sign went up, he, and this is a true story and he was quite serious, he called me and he goes, Chris, oh my god, oh my god, they totally messed your sign up. And I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, your picture is all pixelated. <laughs> um, so I, I thought that that was funny. Um, we have spent so many years, <laughs> you know, impressing a month upon people that real estate agents necessarily have their picture on everything they do, mm -hmm. that he had just assumed that's where our picture was supposed to go. <laughs> that's, that's an example of we've done it for so long, we forget why we do it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's all about the conversation, to beat a dead horse. You, you just got to walk the walk of, of the person you're trying to, trying to court. Um, I, I love this picture because that's how my kids communicate with me. Actually, I have one that, that will only text me. I have another who will, I only communicate 
um, to and 140 characters or less. They won't pick up a phone. They would never check voicemail. And, and your customers are the same. You, they run the gamut. And you just got to be as many things to as many people as you can. So going back to this whole balance in technology, you can see we, we kind of merge a lot and use a lot. I suck at Facebook. I am not a good a tweeter. I, I'm there, but I'm not totally embracing it for all its glory and its potential. Um, but I, I take what works for me on the technology side. I blend it with, with what I know works in my marketing market on the um, the traditional old school tool side, and and. You don't have to be completely fluent in all of these channels. And again, you can't. The idea is to um, just know enough about the language to be able to operate in that environment. Um, so, so things that don't work. Um, well, I've done some really stupid things over the year. My favorite story of stupid Chris idea was I was walking through another brokerage's office one day, and they had they had a wall of all of their agents' um, um, print mailing um, pieces. And one of them, there was an older, in his 60s, gray hair, distinguished-looking gentleman. His picture was on this postcard, and it said, is the market hot or is it just Bob? And I thought, wow, that's really smart, right? And so what do I do? I turn around, I mail the whole flipping community a postcard with my picture on it. And, and this was a few years ago, so I actually was cute. <laughs> and uh, it, it said, is the market hot or is it just Chris? Well, it didn't <laughs> translate. Um, and I got a lot of feedback, but not the kind I wanted. Um, I, had I had people in the grocery store pointing over the produce aisle and going, hey, is the market hot or is it just you, babe? You know, so that, that was an idea of, of a, a bad piece. And of course, it had no nexus to any kind of brand I was, I was trying to develop. Um, I've done some other dumb things. I got the bright idea a couple years ago that I was just going to go hyper, hyper, hyper local and own a couple of condominium complexes. So I picked out a couple 200 home uh, neighborhoods and decided they were going to have their own unique blog and I was going to market it every month and everyone was going to be flocking to the to the ABC condo development blog um, and that didn't work. It was just a monumental waste of time. So. I, I make a lot of mistakes. Um, we all do, but you've got to try new things. You'll you'll never find the you'll never find the holy grail if you don't don't learn to experiment. Great, uh, Chris. We have a bunch of other questions that we want to get to, uh, but first, Mel, can you give us our offers from our sponsors? I can. We have offers from all five of our sponsors, so you guys have a little time to type in questions while I tell you about all of them. You can show your sellers that you market your listing as preferred on homes.com. You can become a preferred agent today, and your first month will be free. This offer expires, expires Friday, so give them a call right now, 888-722-6172, or visit corporate.homes.com forward slash webinar special. And I'm looking at that slide. There is actually no space between webinar and special, so type that all as one word, or just give them a call. If you wanted to become a number one expert, well, webinar time is the time to qualify. Are you ready for that marketing system that brings in an average of 46 leads per month? Well, the best discount of the month is always at webinar time, $199 setup fee for a number one expert. No, that's not the case. It's zero. It's, gone, it's even better than last time. Zero setup for a new number one expert website and zero for a second site. First three signups, 866. 774-2945 or number1expert.com and chat live. Advanced Access, the leader in real estate websites, has two deals today. Zero activation fees on their Pro Series website, or if you're already an Advanced Access client, set up fees completely waived on their Search Impact Internet Marketing Package. More leads and exposure and results online. Always a 30-day money-back guarantee. And the price is right today, zero. 1-800-335-1563 or chat live at advancedaccess.com. Uh, no, there's me, a different number on the slide. The slide is correct. 888-243-7199. I was going old school and reading a printout that was too old. You've worked hard to connect with those prospects. 
be sure you have the right tools to convert them to clients. Uh, you can get all of eNeighborhood's great marketing tools on one web-based desktop with Next. And Paul Dixon will be joining us next at the top of the hour. He'll take us on a quick tour of Next, this amazing package. Um, so stick around, find out, have questions for him about their half-price special, and um, we'll have a way for you to win a book. So do stick around. Now here's a clever way to get your listings preferred status on homes.com and get a full featured website, Premier Website Advantage from Agent Advantage. Here's their webinar special. The setup fee is that magic price today, zero. It's completely waived for the next 24 hours for the first five signups. That's a $200 value. And existing clients, you can get a, a discount as well, similarly $200 off on the eStrategy design package, 888-604. 0284, and that offer expires Friday, so do hurry. And hurry and get any last-minute questions in for Chris. Okay, Chris, we have a question for you here from Marianne. Uh, how do you keep up with all the leads you get and still give good service, and are you just a listing agent? Um, I've, I've always held, and I think most successful agents will tell you this, that, that listings are, are what you're primarily after, and, and not because I only want to be a listing agent, but because listings breed buyers. And so, no, we do both. Um, we, over the years, have typically been about 60-40, heavy on the listing side. Um, this past year, we were closer to 50-50, and that's just indicative of the market. There were fewer listings, fewer discretionary sellers out there, and we don't um, go for the bank-owned gigs. Um, we don't seek out short, short sales. Any agent has to do them these days, but that's, that's not that's not what our business model is. Um, now, because I'm a broker owner, I'm, um, we do have agents who, who work with our company, and if the leads get too overwhelming, you know, we're, we're sending them out to them as well. So we have depth, um, and, that, and that's how, how we handle the leads. But I will tell you, that this, I, I broke down and cried only once last week. This last quarter, we have been so busy and uh, with so many listings all in the throes of staging and, and brochure text that had to be written and MLS inputs that had to be done and I'm pretty control freakish so I do most of it myself, um, it was fairly overwhelming. So that gets back to the balance we all, we all try to achieve, but I have my crazy days, no, no doubt about it. And by the way, I TC all my own transactions on top of it. So I not, I'm not only the broker of record, um, and the way we primarily feed the pizza guy is my husband and I being active real estate agents, but I, I do my own TC work. So speaking of balance, uh, imagine that the average sale price is $110,000. Um, Ray in Port St. Lucie, Florida is, is under those conditions, and he's wondering if his marketing costs or if he's getting a three thousand dollar commission, he's got to keep those marketing costs under five hundred. Would you say? Right. Right. Um, well, you know, the rule of thumb for us has always been, and we're a little heavy on this, but the rule of thumb is about twenty percent of of what you're taking home goes right back into the business. So you're spending 20% of what you make, 20 cents on the dollar, goes back either into business expenses or to marketing costs. And so depending on your area, yeah, if I'm in Shawnee, Oklahoma, I'm, I'm probably not doing bifold brochures at two bucks a pop. Um, but I suspect all of my competitors aren't either for that very reason. Right. Uh, and, and don't forget, cost of living is a little different, so, you know, earnings earnings are all all relative um, but you have to take the idea is to just make that distinction so look at what people in your market are doing and take it up a step um, if they're doing black and white Xerox copies that they're designing on their desktop and they're throwing them in the box and the snails are crawling on them and you know then then do something better then do full color two-sided um, you don't have to mail them, and we tell our agents that there's always a way to accomplish all of this without spending money. Um, you have feet. I spent the first I spent the first four years of my career pulling my kids in a red wagon and walking neighborhoods, 
And so you can take those. In fact, the agent I was talking about with the, with the church experience, um, he had leftover brochures when he was done, and he just walked and dropped them on every door in the surrounding area. So I mail them, he drops them. Um, there are ways to accomplish this without breaking the bank. You've just got to make sure it makes sense for you. That's great advice. And that's why I said your mileage will vary. There's, you know, my answers are that there is no magic bullet. This is what works for me. What works for you is going to be something entirely different. Uh, John wants to know how much of a blog is for consumer information and how much should be about you, the agent? Well, again, there's no should. Um, what my style typically is to take a personal story and weave it into a real estate story. And that's kind of kind of my MO on Inman as well. So um, some, somewhere along the line, a long time ago, I got, I got the moniker. It was actually an article that was in the LA Times, I think, back in 2006 that called me the Irma Bombeck of real estate. And it, and it just stuck. And I kind of went with that because it seemed to work. So, you know, my kid will say something stupid. I, I had my daughter when she was taking a European, going to take a European history class in high school come home and tell me, and we're going to be learning about Louis Vuitton and the French Revolution. Revolution. And I thought that was hysterical. And, and so, you know, right, right war, wrong Louis. And so I, I used that statement to somehow weave it into a real estate story. Um, it's whatever works for you. I, there are bloggers out there who are enormously successful, and they shun talking about anything personal. For me, I have, I have an easier time finding con content when I see the dog do something stupid and, and making a nexus. Um, with what I live on a, on a daily basis in real estate. Chris, thank you. We have to finish your segment, but I really want to thank you for spending your time with us all, giving us great advice, concrete great advice, and I hope you can come back sometime. Well, my pleasure, and I hope everyone goes out there and copies everything that I just shared, because that'll, that'll make me step my game up. <laughs> I think you're going to have a lot of signs. Joining you in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. No worries. Bring it on. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. And uh, in the next few minutes, we're going to hear about neighborhood tools expert Harold Ramus. Well, really? It's a look alike. It's actually Paul Dixon, who is a product expert for eNeighborhoods, and will be giving away Chris Berg's book to the person with the best question for Paul and the person who has the best praise for e-neighborhood. So welcome, Paul. And Paul may be muted. Thanks, thanks nope. Mel. No, he isn't. Great. I'm, I'm good to go. Thanks, Mel and Deb. Great presentation from Chris. Learned a lot of stuff there. So hopefully everyone uh, also did. I want to spend a few minutes here and talk to you about e-neighborhoods. I will come up with the first slide here. We are going to be giving away Chris Berg's uh, book, and, and again, that's V-O-O-K. I didn't know what a book was before I talked to Chris on Monday, and now I know that it's a, a video uh, book online. So uh, great stuff. I, I checked it out. It's a very good book, and we're, our book we're going to be giving those away for the best question at the end of this presentation. So start getting those questions ready, and we'll jump right in here. And we're going to talk about eNeighborhoods, one of the uh, providers of um, uh, sponsors for the Secrets webinars today. eNeighborhoods, if you don't know, is a nationwide provider of school neighborhood data as well as property information. So basically, well, I'm excited to tell you how eNeighborhoods can help grow your business. Uh, what we do provide is marketing tools. Um, those marketing tools will help you uh, basically change the way you do business and make better local connections. You can deliver local information for uh, your prospects in a number of different ways using e-neighborhoods, whether it be in person, on the web, or from your mobile device. And so we're going to talk a little bit about basically how, what can e-neighborhoods do for your business. I kind of want to take a little bit from what I learned. I was taking jotting down notes while I was listening to Chris's presentation because that's the first time I heard it too. And the one thing that I took away from Chris's presentation is one word, and that's branding. And I do a lot of webinars nationwide too uh, on e-neighborhoods. I'm one of the national spokespersons for e-neighborhoods. And I talk about branding in all my webinars because it's so, so important. When you talk about branding, uh, I want to take an excerpt from the American Marketing Association. I researched them, and they describe a brand as a name, term, sign, symbol, or design or a combination of them that are intended to identify the goods and services of one seller or group of sellers and differentiate them from another group of sellers. That same thing can be said for real estate agents who want to brand themselves better than their competition. An effective brand strategy gives you a major edge in increasing competitive markets. And so uh, 
taken again some more words from Chris's presentation here. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're an old school, new school, or somewhere in between age, and I work with all of them. I am also in, uh, in Southern California like Chris, and I have a mixture of all these different types of agents. Some that have been in the business for 40 years and have never even touched technology. They're afraid of it. Or some agents that have been in the business for maybe six months or maybe a month, maybe just started today, and really grasp technology. It doesn't matter where you fit in that uh, realm there. E-neighborhoods can help you convert these leads and prospects into long-term clients. And we're going to do it more effectively than most of the companies out there. And we'll skip over here to... Uh, how effective is eNeighborhoods going to be for your bottom line? Can all of you use one to three leads per month? I'm sure you can, but I'm sure all of you would rather have one to three new clients per month. Everyone talks about, I can give you leads, but if you can't convert those leads into long-term clients, then you really are missing the boat here. Today's prospects want more than just property information. I was uh, reading some blogs from the National Association of Realtors the other day, and according to a recent poll, they're saying that customers or buyers out there are more interested in the neighborhood than the property itself. Think about that in your own uh, personal lives. When you want to go purchase a property, you're going to find the neighborhood you want to live in before you start looking at properties that are available in that neighborhood. And that's why we've created a, a program called Neighborhood Envoy. Neighborhood Envoy is real estate's most complete information resource. And we have three different portions of, uh, of the uh, Neighborhood Envoy program. The first one is called Go Personal. Go Personal is for that old school uh, client who really wants that printed material. As Chris mentioned in her, in her uh, presentation, she has a lot of clients out there that really want that, that report to hold in their hands. They want those direct mail campaigns sent to them in the mail. And so the Neighborhood Report, which is the Go Personal portion of Neighborhood Envoy, delivers this rich local information in a very beautiful presentation that you can take to every meeting and presentation. And since I am one of the main uh, presenters for E-Neighborhood, just to tell you how some people use this reports, they target new business by going door to door and dropping off a report about the neighborhood saying, hey, I sell Sally's house down the street. If you need an agent, I'm your person. Or they go to an open house and they, they throw one of these things on the kitchen table so when somebody comes in to learn about the uh, property that they're selling, they can actually have the support educate them about the neighborhood as well. All of these reports you can either upload to a website or distribute by email as well. And uh, when we go to the next slide, there we go. Um, in addition to reports, we also have a couple other ways to present the neighborhood and school data that we provide. Now, all of our school neighborhood data come from the source. We get data from the county. We get data from the schools directly. We get all this data that we provide to you in not just the printed form, but also the Go Mobile and the Go Web form as well. Those of you that have an Apple or an Android uh, the mobile device, whether it be a mobile phone, whether it be a tablet computer, whether it be a, an iPad, whatever you have out there, you'll be able to download our app. Once you uh, get a neighborhood's Neighborhood Envoy product, you'll be able to download our app from the App Store and start using this on your mobile device. Imagine driving around a neighborhood and you have a buyer in your front seat, and the buyer says, you know what, Paul, this is a beautiful neighborhood. Tell me about the schools. I have young children. Tell me about the neighborhood itself. Tell me about the median home sale price. Tell me about all the recent home sales in the area. From your mobile device, you'll be able to access all that information and more. The Go Web portion is going to allow you to uh, put a link on your personal website, or like uh, Chris mentioned, her blog. She can actually put a link on her blog. Or if you use social media, if you didn't take my class yesterday, I do have a social media class that I, that I do, and we talked about how to take reports from Next and put those on your Facebook, your Twitter, all that good information, and you can do that using our program. CMAs. Everyone has CMAs. If you were hoping that we're going to give you a CMA, we don't have a CMA. We have something more than a CMA. We kind of joke around at our company. We call our CMA the ultimate listing presentation. Uh, a full-featured CMA like our program answers the two biggest questions that sellers have, and that is, how, can I, uh, how much can I get for my home, and who's the right person to sell it? But remember, CMAs are not just for sellers anymore. They can be for buyers as well to show market analysis. In today's market, Many buyers search for multiple properties. If you ask me how the market is today compared to 10 years ago, because I've been in the business for almost 15 years, uh, buyers are looking at more properties today and visiting more homes and taking uh, you know, somewhere around 12 weeks to make a decision when they're searching for homes. 
you can simplify the process by giving them a buyer tour. Our buyer tour is designed to help you gain buyer loyalty. Don't just give your buyer a property detail report. Give them a dynamic buyer tour complete with property analysis, maps, loan and cost analysis, and much, much more. Professional flyers, brochures, postcards, and property cards are all part of our design center. If you're not a designer, it's not a big problem because the eNeighborhoods Design Center does all the work for you. It helps you create high-profile, professional-looking flyers, brochure, and postcards. Very similar. I was looking at Chris's postcard, or her, her postcard and her flyers, and I saw some resemblance in ours. We have some very beautiful designs already created for you, even ways to go in and create your own designs as well. Create these designs in less than 60 seconds. It's easy to stay in touch uh, using the eNeighborhoods program here. What you can do is use our direct marketing section. We do have a home sales alert section as well as different types of drip campaigns. There's two sections to this. There's the printed materials, as Chris mentioned in her uh, presentation, that she sends out in the mail to her clients or prospective clients. And we also have the automatic email system. I kind of remember an old uh, uh, an infomercial I used to watch on TV, the Ron John Rotisserie commercial, they had the best slogan ever. It was, set it and forget it. And I think that's really nice with our presentation here. The direct ma mail campaigns and the email campaigns are just like that. Set it up one time, and it goes out automatically, either every week, every two weeks, every month. You choose how often it goes out to your clientele, out to your farm area. And this is the most popular one you're seeing right here, the home sales alert. Give them what they want. Uh, quoting uh, Chris's uh, presentation, she said, show them, don't tell them. The one thing that clients want out there or prospective buyers and sellers want out there is property data. Using in a direct marketing like the home sales alert, it sends out the five closest home sales to your prospect's property address every single time these things go out. And those can be on either a weekly or monthly uh, time frame. We have over 21 completely automated email campaigns and 500 pre-written messages for both buyers, sellers, and homeowners. More than 400,000 real estate professionals around the world rely on e-neighborhoods. This is the truth. We've been in business for a very, very long time. We're partnering with great uh, companies like Homes.com and Advanced Access, Number One Expert, Agent Band, all these ones you've been hearing about today. We have such a big client database that we have been using our, these people have been using our program for a very long time. And it, again, it doesn't matter how well you know technology or not, the program is very simple to use. It works, it has that wow factor, and it's really gonna change the way you do business. We do have some specials going on. Our neighborhood tools start as little as $19.95 a month. You can buy it on a yearly basis. Uh, if you buy it on a yearly basis, it's always the best option. We do have 50% off right now, and that comes out to just under a little, uh, probably about 80 cents a day. So imagine under a dollar a day, you can get these great marketing tools, change the way you do business, get more clients, and look like a rock star in the process. Amazing program. Take a look at it. There's a phone number here to call. Get set up right away. And uh, we're going to take some questions here if we have any. And the best question, we're going to give away one of uh, Chris Berg's uh, books. How are we doing well, on questions there? We, well, there? we still have questions for Chris. I'm wondering okay. if people misunderstood and thought they could still type in a question for Chris. We do have a comment, though. Um, Connie, who is an eNeighborhoods uh, client, says she loves eNeighborhoods. It gives me even more comps than I can find myself. I don't know how it does that. Yeah, one, let me just touch on that really quickly. One thing that we have are, uh, are more properties than your MLS has. Because we are a data company, we do our data aggregation, we bring in all the com uh, properties that are sold transactions in every area across the country. We do work in all 50 states. And the way we do that is we go to the county recorder offices and we bring in stuff that the MLS doesn't give you, like sold for sale by owners sold new construction, we give you away all the private transactions included in our program. So you basically blend all these private transactions you don't normally have with your MLS data, and that's where you get more properties in our program than any other product out there. Good question. Does it work in Canada? It doesn't work in Canada yet. Uh, we are working on that. The only uh, place it works is in the United States, and we do have a product available in Australia, but that's about it as it stands today. We're working, though, on getting it in Canada very soon. All right, and John asked a question, I think it's for Chris, but uh, how effective are virtual tours in marketing? Do you know that answer, Paul? I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? 
how effective a virtual tour is in marketing? Well, talking to agents, I, I, I've heard you know both sides of the story there. I mean, uh, virtual tours are good uh, as far as what I've heard from agents talking about it and have, having them on their on their um, uh, sites. I mean, it gives you more of a, of a visual representation. I mean, there's two types of people out there. There's the visual people and the more the analytical people. Myself. I'm more of a visual person, and so kind of seeing the property itself gives me a better representation than actually just seeing words on a page. And if you're talking about just showing those on a website or a blog, um, they can be very effective, but I think most clients or prospective clients are going to want to actually see that in person. So I, can, I think you can see both sides of that story for the virtual tour segment. Okay, Paul. Uh, Edit would like to know, is eNeighborhood similar to Realtor.com snapshots? Uh, there's there's a lot of companies out there like that company that compete with us in some portions, but there's really no company out there that has everything we have in one location. I mean, you may talk about different neighborhood and school uh, uh, companies out there that compete against, against the neighborhood envoy product. You have a number of CMA companies that compete against our CMA product, uh, flyer companies that compete our design center product, but we have so many different aspects of our program, and you don't have to buy everything. If you wanted just to purchase a single product, you can do that, but you get the most value by purchasing everything as a whole. So uh, it's hard to say that, uh, that one company really competes directly with us in the entire program, but they may have certain features that we have. But I think that once you compare our product to these other products, you're going to see a big difference. And all of our programs do come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you did want to compare our product side-by-side -side with something else out there in the market, we do encourage you to do that. Greg has a question, and it might be our last. Uh, does the link for Envoy that you would put on your website allow the prospect to run a report for their neighborhood, or is this a report that you would put about a particular neighborhood? Now, there's two portions. There's three portions of Neighborhood Envoy. If you're talking about the Go Personal portion, that's going to be the printed materials, and we do have a button inside our program that you can upload those right to a website or a blog. And so, even the printed materials can be generated as a link, and th those links are just PDFs. Now, if you're talking about the Go Web portion, where it's a link to put on your website, it is fully integrated for your client to do all the searching themselves. Basically, what it looks like is a big map of the United States, and the very top that says put in an address, a city, a zip code, or a school district, your prospective client from your website can click inside there, type in an address they want to know about, and it shows instantly a lot of the school and neighborhood statistics right around that property. It's important to know that eNeighborhoods pulls all our, our data from the block group. Uh, most companies out there, if they're going to tell you they're going to give you neighborhood and school data, you should ask them at what level they give it to you because most of them are census level. Now, the difference between a census tract and a block group is the number of homes. A census tract is about 1,200 homes, and a block group is about 400 homes. So most companies out there that say they give you uh, neighborhood and school data or property data, we have three different areas within their one area. So all of our data, the, uh, the clients can go in and search on their own just by putting in a property address. That's all they need, or a city or a zip code. OK, and we've got a winner because you have to do this in one sentence. So it's a challenge from Jerry. I, I hope he or she is not a friend of yours. In one short <laughs> sentence, agents are inundated with all kinds of different tools at different costs. Why should an agent choose e-neighborhoods over others? Jerry May, we're going to send you a book. And you have one sentence, Paul. You can use commas, but no periods. <laughs> Great question. E-Neighborhoods is the premier neighborhood and school data company across the country that provides you with tools to help you with the business, to gain more prospects, gain more leads, and also take your business to the next level. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. And also we have another winner. Connie, you have won a book for your great praise of e-neighborhood. And so we will get your information after this and let you know how we're going to deliver that to you. Next month, we have Michael Creaser, Gorilla Video Marketing, just shoot it. Uh, Michael knows everything you need to know about how to do video marketing for your business in the simplest possible manner. You have to come. It's, he's great. Wednesday, May 25th, uh, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific. And then after that, we were going to have a speaker who was talking about going green and how that will increase your green in your wallet. So 
Secrets webinar regularly overflows with about 1,000 attendees. So sign up now. Go to secretsoftopsellingagents.com or follow the link that we're going to be sending you now. Paul, thank you so much for your presentation. He's thank you for having us. On. Sure. Um, while you're at secretsoftopsellingagents.com, check out the 45 other top real estate agents, brokers, trainers, and authors giving you free education. I'm actually not sure where else you can hear real estate giants like this for free. Be sure to participate in the exit survey. I appreciate your feedback. Goodbye and enjoy the rest of the day. And thanks to our awesome webinar team, Mel, Laura, Lindsay, Felicity, Patty, and Gary. Thank you, guys. See you next month. Bye-bye. Bye, Mel. not what you send, it's that you do. I don't sleep. All my emails are personalized. My houses come up in the first You're recording that testimony. Really, the more you have to be organized. Not to put all your eggs into one basket. Keep those people remembering you. Give them what they're looking for. But properly priced is the key. I say, how can I do this different? You know, we don't have a technology problem, we have a people problem. You have to build a relationship. Secret, the top selling agent. Yeah, let's clarify that for everybody. June 29th, Michael Carissa joining us, continuing our video discussion, Guerrilla Video Marketing, June 29th. Put that in our calendar, and that's right on the website. So if you go to secretswebinars.com and register now, it will send you the correct date, June 29th. See you then.